that time again, boys. Confess your sins to me. Give me them. <laughs> Tell me they're a dirty secret. I have a desire to run a game and be a GM for the first time, but I allow Cardis to stop me. Just fucking do it. Stop just being, do it. Stop being a big foot and just fucking do it. <laughs> like, you're gonna, do it. like you're gonna make a hack of it. It's probably gonna be shit. Everyone's probably gonna hate you. But just At least fucking you try. Just fucking do it, right? And if they know that you're gonna be your first time, then you know. As long as they're not dicks about it. Or or we end up leaving a story about you someday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is always good. <laughs> yeah. I like the TG life, but local game stories reek of too much autism and man children that I was told by a friend I'm too good for these places. I'd have loved to have access to D&D and 40k sooner, but it seems I've outgrown the people there before I even had the chance to fully experience it. No, I would no. say give it a go. You never know. Like, honestly, um... People I've played with Argyle, they're mostly dead on guys. They're not yeah. the worst. Like, okay, yeah, you do. You do find them. Like, there's a lot of man children out there. I'm not gonna. I'm not yeah, gonna lie about that. Yeah, we read a lot of stories about them, but not all groups are like that. No, you do come across, and once you find a solid group to play with, you pretty much. You're set. pretty much, yeah. You know, it's it, it is worth it. It's, yeah. What, what's what's that saying? You regret it if you don't. It's uh, it's better to have loved and lost than to never, never loved before. Been, yeah, yeah. Have loved it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, something along those lines. I want to ERP online, but everyone is either furry or gay. Sounds about right. Yeah, honestly. sounds about right. And oh, I was watching a really interesting one the other day, um, down the rabbit hole about furries, yeah. right? And they were talking about like you know the origins of furries and stuff like this. And uh, one of the things that they were talking about was in like you know the late 90s there was like this group of furries that said like right at the conventions can you guys stop because there was an there was an example of one guy getting sucked off in the in the hotel lobby <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> like, you guys all, all you guys know about me first so <laughs> yeah, uh, first right. wasn't new um and they're like, like guys can we please stop with all this sex, sex <laughs> on over the top can we please just like you're making us all look bad here and uh you know there was a big vocal community of them and then they all got branded as homophobes and, oh. and <laughs> everything else okay. and then they got drowned out and uh that's the furry community of today i, I would say base but not base <laughs> Like, they did try to see, salvage what yeah. they had. I'll give them credit. I ripped a 10 second long dry fart just as another player finished their dramatic speech to an NPC about not giving up the fate of the city so easily. The GM basically made it canon that the PC that made the speech farted and now the player hates my guts for ruining their moment. <laughs> I did not shit myself. I checked well on webcam with them so they all knew it was me if it wasn't obvious enough already. <laughs> Uh, you know, actually, I'll tell you guys a wee bit of a story. This was only like a couple of weeks ago. Are you all about the child? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was sitting holding the child. I was at the PC. I was doing something. I was holding the child. And I mean, like, I farted. It was good. It, <laughs> I mean, it was one of the worst farts. It would farts. make your eyes water. It, it was a really bad one. And the child started crying. <laughs> like, baby Ozzy just wouldn't stop me. And he just kept crying for about an hour and a half. It was good. Really bad. I, I, so we couldn't console, console him. him. It was good. Really his bad. daddy farted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I suppose once you become a dad, then do you farts like tenfold? Is it like, <laughs> is it like, is it like being a wizard and growing a beard? It's like yeah. you get your power level advances. <laughs> I don't know. I insert my shitty fetishes into every game I DM. Big titty goth witches. I feel no shame for this. I mean, is there any shame in big titty, in goth, big goth, titty witches? goth witches? I don't I think there's anything to be shamed of when it comes to big titty goth witches. I mean, yeah. like they're pretty. Pretty. It said once again, big titty goth witches. <laughs> yeah, like you know, if if you're, like, if you're gonna insert it, I'm not gonna argue with you. Yeah. And uh, Teo, don't be taking any notes here for the love of God. <laughs> I know what you're like. There was one, there was one time we were doing a video, and uh, I said something about like realistically, all these people. What what it like? It was about people wanting to be molested by minotaurs, and of course, the week after, Teo decided to put us in a fucking. A dungeon minotaur. minotaur sexy, a horny minotaur. Yeah, he thought it was hilarious. Of course he did. That's why people think you're a furry, furry teal. <laughs> <laughs> I want to run a gritty Civil War horror western game, but I don't know how to portray the race relations. Players would fight a Ku Klux Klan snake lifting cult that unwittingly worshipped a great old one that's disguised itself as Robert E. Lee, claiming to be the second coming of Jesus. I, I, that I, I, sounds pretty fun, not gonna lie. I, I would be up for that. It, it does. Yeah. It, now, I, I will say it does give me Far Cry vibes. Yeah. But 
I do think there's a lot of potential there, but it depends on the players. So, yeah. you know, finally, you're going to get a few players that are depends like, on the soul level, you, you know, they yeah. can't hack it. Or, like, yeah. I refuse to be able to interact with anything that isn't out of my norm. Yeah. You know, that type of But bullshit. it's not like you're playing as the Klingons. Yeah, no, you're, you're fighting, fighting against, against them. them. So, like, you know. But, you know, fight, like, there's, there's crazy people getting this world. But I think that sounds. I, I like that. I, I yeah. would be well for that. My group and I are no games to hell and back, and it's my fault. I've been a GM for three years and I haven't been a player for even longer. I told my group, all right, the well is dry and I don't think I can run games anymore. Someone else will have to go. It's been five months and not a single person out of our nine person group will even dare to take up the mantle, but instead will occasionally hassle me about running a game. At least I get to play in a blood bowl league. That's just depressing. Sad though. that no one else will take over. <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm fucking spoiled. So I am because all the other boys gun games and I'm the only one that doesn't <laughs> DM. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of well, feel you saying know, that nobody wants to play a game with you being DM teams. <laughs> you know what? That's actually pretty true. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't play a game that I was DM. <laughs> so you know. But no, all the other guys. Like, you know, the thing is, they're all more the people, and they're all good. And it's it's nice to play di- with different DMs because I feel they all all have something different to add, or yeah. they have a different way of running games, yeah. which I think's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, it really mixes it up quite a bit. Right, you slimy gets. As you know, we got all the gobble slaves hard at work keeping the printers tickety boo. Some of them are even getting a bit sex deprived and start making naughty models of their own. Ooh. But at the minute, we only paying them in bottles of water. But if you buy models from us, we'll be able to pay them one gold piece a week. That's proper good wages for gobbles to get. But if big teddy goblins aren't what you want, we got it all. We got uh, dwarves, elves, elfids, demons, kobolds, all that, and even some of them ugly humies. But you can only get it on that www dot thing, uh, nekbiria dot co something something. I'll get one of the gobbles to do it. They're more tech savvy than me. Also, we got more than just models. We got a lot of them subclasses and pre-made adventures too. Proper good, that. We play it down Thursday night down the local tavern. We get a pint of grog and we sit down and play it. Big Morgy last week played as that crackhead monk. And he was actually quite good at it, seeing as he's not right in the head ever since the barmaid whacked him for smacking his tits. But, yeah, go over and check it out. That's all me. That's me, darling. See you back. Bye. <laughs> I make all my characters virgins so I can self-insert them. I mean, at least he's working on what he knows. Exactly. So, work you with know, what you've got. Work with what you got. And don't be ashamed of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably about to quit my grip. I like playing tabletop with them, and they say they're glad I joined and seem to mean it. But it's becoming increasingly clear that I have absolutely nothing in common with any of them outside of liking tabletop. I tend to show up as close to possible to the start of the session without actually being late. Because nine times out of ten, I don't know what the fuck they're all talking about. And vice versa if I start talking about something. I'm also a skilled blue collar worker while they're all a mix of white collar professionals who make way more money than I do. I got invited to this group by an old friend of mine and I don't want to give up in that relationship even if all the above applies as much as him to anyone else. But the feeling of being out of place is starting to hamper my ability to enjoy the game. If you don't enjoy the game, then... Well, how don't. do you know that you don't have anything in common? Yeah, like, you know, look, the problem is, like, you know... For the me- thing is, just because they are in a profession, they're in professional jobs and they make more money, doesn't mean that that's well, all not, that they not talk about. But th- that doesn't mean that that's all that they talk about. I mean, like, you know, all, like... If like, you're into tabletop... You're probably going to be into, like... Something else. You're probably... You might have a vague interest in Star Trek, or you might have some level of like interest in you know and something else. I I would in something of a similar genre. Yeah, I I would you know, go early one day. A lot of nerd hobbies do overlap. Like. The nerd hobbies do overlap. Yeah. quite a bit. Or try and make an effort to talk to a couple of them. Yeah, you know, you never know. You might make actually really good friends out of them. Yeah, I think you would. Don't put them would. all into the same box because. Money doesn't define the person. Yeah, that's very true. The person defines the person. I don't know. You know, the thing is, like, you know, modern day, though, I find, like, most blue-collar work, like, you know, tradesman mm-hmm. work, it's actually better money than fucking... Yeah. You know, yeah, I... Yeah, nowadays, I, anyway. For, where, where we are, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, if you don't have a trade. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have a trade over here, Top, you're, you're top tier, fun. do you drive a forklift? <laughs> you know what I mean? The, 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 the pyramid of education. Yeah. So you got, like, you, you got your... Do you shovel I, shovel shit? <laughs> yes. Yes. 
top of the pyramid. Big house owned about six houses. <laughs> you know, it, it goes docked with them forklift up here. Yes. <laughs> just, just putting that out there, guys. In one of my games, I put a fairy in a cage next to an unstable arcane crystal. One of the players picked the crystal and I made him roll a d20 to see what kind of magic ray will affect the fairy. I didn't give a shit about the roll. I just made the fairy grow into jumbo size, almost crushing the players with their thick ass. I'm into that shit. <laughs> it was the only time I made this. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, like some t- sometimes you just you just need a fairy with a dump truck asshole. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I think everyone's seen that meme of Tinkerbell being stuck in the lock. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think all oh, you guys know Everybody's exactly. Seen yeah, that. <laughs> you, you guys know what I'm on about. I turn every game I run into misery porn, boss rush, as one of my players described it. I can't help it. I love breaking the character spiritually, mentally, and physically. My last game started with a viewed lesbian romance during a New Year party and ended with me killing a toddler with hammers, forcing a player to eat a puppy, and commit a massacre on the civilians hiding from demons, which has pushed one PC to the verge of suicide. I also body hoard a player raped one player with a water elemental. <laughs> Not the Kuma elemental. No. It's a Kuma elemental. <laughs> you know exactly what that is. Forced one NPC into self-harm and that's just some of the things. And I love every minute of it. I get such pleasure from inflicting misery. It's not even sexual. I It just makes me warm and fuzzy inside. Um, okay, so Jigsaw. Sociopath. Jigsaw, get out here. What are you doing? Yes. Where's your little tiny... Want to play a little game? <laughs> Where's your little tiny bicycle now? <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I've, uh, I've never. I get adding horror elements, horror elements in the games, but this. Eh, like, are the players enjoying it though? I like. Oh, they must do, be if they're still they, playing. Yeah, if they're still playing it. Yeah, I get. Says ima- I turn every game as one of my players describe it. So I'm guessing mm. he has a solid grip, and they. They're kind of into that they're shit. Still there. <laughs> well, okay, whatever you're into, I suppose. Um. I mean, okay. like, did you really need to call it kill a toddler with a hammer, though? Exactly. Did, <laughs> did you need to do that? <laughs> did, did, did you need to eat did, the puppy? Did you really have to, though? Did, could we? Was there no other option? Was it you that didn't bring into this? Was it the players, you know? I had a player who was a gigantic retard. He didn't like specific themes at all. Space, darkness, underground, anything that included dark and slash or claustrophobic spaces. And didn't like any changes in the rules that he didn't personally approve. I tried talking to him, but instead he went passive aggressive and would role play sitting around or being aggressive to other players because that's what my character would do. Again I tried talking to him and so did the rest of the party but he wouldn't listen. He would constantly make characters that made no sense or were outright aggressive to others due to background. When I thought of kicking him though and discussed it with the others, they heavily protested because you don't do that to friends and I don't know man, that's too harsh. So I secretly would make anything logistically possible to have his character out of the scene so the rest of us can roleplay in peace. Enemy randomly choosing a target? That guy. NPC taking PCs with him on some RP scene? Didn't choose that guy. Rock falls and someone gets separated in an enclosed part of the tunnel? That guy. Someone is suspected of being a traitor in the group? Evidence happens to point to that guy. <laughs> I mean, like, you're. Well, <laughs> be honest with you, he is bringing on himself. Yeah, he is bringing on but himself. You're also, but you're not helping the matter as well, you know. But sometimes people like this kind of deserve it. But yet again, he's the DM, and if he wants to kick him, and all the rest said no, this is the best way to quote unquote kick him without him actually being out of the group. I mean, like, what? what's. He might leave on his own. Did, did the guy sign up for an Underdark campaign? And he's like, I don't want to do an Underdark campaign. But, but I'm it's say not it. an Underdark campaign. It's just he doesn't like anything remotely dark. It's kind of cringe, not going to lie. I know. Um, like you're, you're role playing. You're role playing as an adventures mostly. Yeah. So you're going to run into an adventures and dark dungeons. And yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's a generic. And, that, that's that, a default. Like, that's default that's and du- <laughs> dungeons and dragons. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of. I don't... I don't know what you would honestly. It feels just like just don't play. Honestly, I, I just wouldn't even accommodate. I, I feel like I would be like, look, man. But I'm that cunt to be like, right, just go home. Just if you're not up for it, if you're not interested, that's just fine. Go home. If you like, tell you what, I've literally sat and prepared this game. I'm not rewriting it just for you. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> End of. I feel like people people really need to know what they're signing up for before they actually start playing, and I think that would fix so many fucking issues. Yeah, but it's in the fucking name. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right. <laughs> so guys, I think this is a real confession. <laughs> like an actual confession like for actual a change. actual confession 999. Um, I killed a man by cutting the brake line of his car over a D&D campaign. He died in a car crash a week later. After I made sure he was good and liquored up, I was never caught, and to this day I believe the son of a bitch deserved it. His car was such a piece of shit, it was written off as an accident. He put his <laughs> stupid car through my garage door and was a huge energy drain. My group meets at my house to play and he regularly showed up to games drunk or late and expected people to wait for him. Sure, everyone's a little tardy, but it's unreasonable to show up to a game an hour later, drunk or high. He really got on my nerves. And as he kept checking his phone, leading us down insane tangent and just generally being a very annoying. Also, he kept putting out cigarettes on my table. I work for a living. Weekends are the only time I have to unwind. Getting everyone in one location is difficult enough. It's worse when you have to spend hours around someone corrosive with the group, getting bored and slash hours short of attention. After a while, I just couldn't take it. I had to kill him and good riddance. I didn't even bother to show up at his funeral. Too bad for his kids, but they're better off. What the actual fuck? I hope this is fake. It has <laughs> well, to be. A solid LARP. I, I, I'm going to assume this is a LARP. Um, it has to be. <laughs> I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I have came across. I have came across some Somebody people just with un, unbridled rage. <laughs> Somebody wrote, yes, that is much more reasonable than just kicking him out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is. Oh my god, like, you know, yeah, I could just turn around and actually talk to the person. Or like, you know, the thing is, if you start putting fags out on my table... You're just going to get slapped about the show anyway the yeah. second you even do yeah. that. So who's the bitch? You know what I mean? Like, letting you, someone get on like that. You're letting do that? So, uh... I, uh I, I've, I've, no, I've, no, I've no work. Like, I think that's where we're going to end it today. Yeah. Uh, we ended up on our... Well, this is probably the wor- This is definitely the worst confession we've ever had. Bar the other one of... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that one deserved a bell. So yeah, it that one deserved a bell. Yeah, that one deserved a bell. <laughs> um, definitely the worst Maybe confession. Maybe a little bell to the place as well. <laughs> yeah. But there was another one that we did. This was a while back, actually. I need to dig it up. I found it in the archive. And uh, it was it was, about, it was about the someone was fucking their DM's wife. Yes. And then they saw it in our video. They saw it in our video. And apparently it all fucking... And it all fucking hell blew up. Hell, 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 hell blew us. Well, don't put it on the internet for us to read. <laughs> well, well, we did Like, it must be... Like, put it like this. If they were able to fucking piece it together... You know, if you were able to piece it pieces together from a random post on TG... But imagine. That, that one was pretty bad, like, you know, but this one... Um, yeah, that one's pretty bad too. That's pretty bad. Um, have you guys ever like done anything like really bad? Have you ever killed a guy? <laughs> you know, have you ever like on a lot of killed someone? Just killed someone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I honestly, I'm tra- like, okay, oh, oh, okay, my my one, my one. Okay, so last night, um, a free man ran us a game, did a really good job. A free man, very good voice actor. I know somebody who decapitated somebody IRL. Who? Hey. Oh, gee, yeah, give us that one instead. That's way better than what I'm going to say. Yeah. Um. Well. She was a carer, yeah. right? We and used to work in care. Yeah, I used to work in care. She was a carer, so we go to their houses. And um, this girl, they, they would normally go to this man, and he was a wee bit of a dick. And he always put like his walker in front of the door, shopping to stop them from coming in. And they had to like jimmy their way in to try and get into the house to see if he was all right. And one morning, her and this other girl came up to the house, tried to get in, and it, the door was jammed, but normally it always was. And she kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, and by the time she got in, it was like a murder scene. The man had collapsed in the middle of the night and died. He was already dead. Mm. But he'd fallen behind the door. Oh, yes. He'd fallen behind the door, and she was pushing pushing, thinking it was something up against the door. And you know the door stoppers that stick out? Yeah. That had like slit right through his throat and his head was like decapitated. Well, that's fucking brutal. So it is. I, yeah, I remember you said, yeah, I remember when that yeah. happened. That was a good few years back now. Mm-hmm. That would have been, what, 13, 14? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Any of you guys actually had any like mad shit? You know what? We need to do a video. Like, fuck all this D&D shit. We need to do one about like spooky shit. We need yeah. to do a video. Well, it, it, it's, it's Halloween, it's Halloween. boys. You know what? We're, we're going to do that. We're going to do one about like weird stories. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, we're going to do scary stories. Like, it's first of October. Um, it's not the first. No, it, well, it's a fourth it's actually. Fourth. <laughs> like like a, a time all melds into one. It's October anyway. I want to try and do some spooky shit this month. 
I Would feel you like, like some spooky shit? Because that is my special doubt, speciality. I think we should do some spooky. Yeah. But look, that's where we're going to end it. If you, have you guys ever killed anyone? Let us know in the comments down below. Though. <laughs> and while you're there, <laughs> check out our models. <laughs> yeah, it helps us out a lot. Uh, also, uh, don't put your cigarettes out on someone's fucking table. No. But also, don't cut people's brakes or mess with people's cars or um, don't don't be a crimmer. Yeah, don't don't, be, don't, yeah. don't do X, Y, and Z. But uh, you know what you should do. Hit subscribe and hit the notification <laughs> yeah. bell so you get notified every time we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye!